Let's look at various areas involving fixed cost as well as variable cost in order to fully understand how we need both types to determine the full cost of security for, for any company. Fixed costs are simply the budget related items to security programs that are put in place to provide security and protection for your company. Obviously, they typically include salary, equipment costs, administrative expenses, and they represent the cost of preventative security efforts by the company to mitigate against identified risk. Variable costs are far ranging from issues related to scale and size to issues as simple as the old axiom one-offs. Variable costs can be much harder to predict and control and often, unfortunately, we spend less time in understanding them until either their costs become unacceptable or some major event catches our attention. We then develop risk strategies to address those, those growing variable lost costs. We will look at both of these in greater detail in the next slides. As I mentioned earlier, fixed costs are generally predictable. For example, the biweekly paycheck for the security guard is built into the budget for 26 payments, as is the administrative overhead. The cost of the guard's time is measurable. The number of guard hours required times the hourly salary times the administrative cost equal your total guard cost. The cost is not only easily identified, but it generally fits into a category and classically it has an owner, you. The cost is controllable and you can readily increase or decrease the cost of your guard coverage by adding or reducing the number of guard hours. Variable security costs are much tougher to predict, to manage, and to explain. For example, a one-time theft of significant value is probably not budgeted, but it is still a security-related cost. The evacuation of a factory or an operating center has a cost in terms of lost productivity, which can be, but is seldom, calculated. Business units have the potential for a large number of unpredictable security-related losses when they occur, but that can be analyzed over a fixed time period and become helpful in creating ranges or estimates of variable lost cost. Going back to the credit card example, while you cannot predict the specific amount of fraud, you certainly can predict within a given period of time that there will be a predictable range of losses. Root cause analysis becomes critical in working to control variable costs and in balancing a fixed cost security program that offsets the variable lost cause. Critically, the issue of creating fixed cost to reduce variable losses is a subject to analysis on increasing your return on investment. Let's discuss the function of scale in this regard. We have observed that oftentimes variable security cost in terms of losses can be unpredictable and that they oftentimes can represent a surprise. But somewhat differently, variable cost can also be a simple function of scale. For example, packaging. Let's say to protect your product and educate consumers to avoid purchasing counterfeit knockoffs, the company provides a state-of-the-art security seal. The cost of this seal is known per item. And what is needed to determine the, is the total number of units to be produced, which will then tell you the total variable cost. Simply the seal cost times the number of units equals the total security cost. In the same example, there are security costs related to shrinkage. 
what is stolen during production, during transportation, typically at a distribution center, and finally at the retail level. The key issue for the security director is in understanding the liability to your company or to other partner companies or finally to an insurance company. Besides shrinkage, in some sectors you will have issues involving gray market and counterfeit costs to determine. The counterfeit issue can be complex. Typically, business people will often argue that the buyer of a counterfeit product is not their, quote, real customer in any case, and therefore there is no lost revenue. Finally, there are reconciliation costs, and those are the costs that a company has to expend to, to resolve a loss through balancing its accounts receivable, its inventory lost, and in some cases, uh, customer disputes. Obviously, the fewer losses, the lower the cost on reconciliation. The greater the number of lost, the higher the level of reconciliation cost. This is important to understand for the security director since oftentimes this is measured as an indirect cost or an operating cost, but in fact may amount to a significant loss of margin to the company. The bottom line for you, the security director, is that these variable costs can be difficult to identify in goal setting and in maintaining profit margins, but they nevertheless represent extraordinary value to the businesses if they're examined and articulated correctly.